Hey everybody, Akira's here. Welcome back to the Long Dark Whiteout Challenge series. This is going to be part 7. So, I did go back and I looked at episode 2 where I'm in Jackrabbit Island. And around the 2 minute, 2 and a half minute mark, somewhere around there, I go into a bedroom and I look next to a, briefly, I scan right past uh, like a, uh, a wardrobe. And to the left of it in the corner, it looks like there is a rifle there. It's hard to tell. But a uh, special shout out to Avriel Valkara and Jeff Love for, uh, he also confirmed it as well. So I uh, I don't remember there being anything stacked there like a, a broom that kind of tripped me up in the last episode. Um, so I don't think it's a broom. And I don't remember there ever being anything stacked there. So I have like a very high certainty that that's probably going to be a rifle. So I'm putting all my faith in you guys. Great eagle eyes there, guys. Appreciate it. And uh, we're just going to head on back to Coastal, check Jackrabbit Island again. And uh, guess what? We can just blast our way over there. No problem. So what we do need to do is drop a bit of food and stuff. So I'm going to just eat as much as I can here. There's 188 uh, calories of a partial peanut butter jar there. And uh, what else? Is, uh, I don't know, pork and beans. They're kind of sketchy, but we'll go for it. So I'm just going to eat as much as I can here, drink as much as I can, and then just drop whatever I can't carry down a rope. Uh, we should be fine with our... Yeah, we're at 35. We just need to lose a little bit of weight. I think probably water's going to be... We could drop a lot of water. We're going to be able to just basically drop enough water to uh, make this happen. I should have probably just drank sodas. No way I get calories and hydrate, but... Again, we're not trying to conserve at this point. We're trying to get rid of stuff. We should have plenty of food. If not, we'll just hunt something real quick, and that'll be that. I think we're, yeah, we're not even thirsty now, so we're all maxed out pretty much. Uh, where are we at now? Yeah, a little bit heavy, but that's okay. We'll just, like I said, just drop some stuff. I don't know we're going to drop some of this. Some of the sketchier stuff. How about we get rid of everything that's yellow? Let's go by condition. It's probably going to be a lot, actually. Okay, so we'll get rid of that, 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 that. And we're going to be, yeah, we should be underweight now. All right, dropped a lot of stuff. Yeah, there we go. All right, let's get going here. Down a rope, up a rope. So, shouldn't tuck us out too much. And uh, I'm just going to make a straight shot. Straight down through Mystery Lake once we get over there. Down the railroad. And uh, head right back to Coastal like to uh, get the rifle hopefully and uh, get that checked off the to-do list then we can just focus on what some firewood and some other little things maybe a little bit of water things like that someone else in the comments mentioned that when it comes to stockpiling water it actually has to be water it can't be like soda sodas or anything like that they believe that sodas and things like that would count like calories would count towards your food stocks but not your water, so. Yeah, good comments, as usual, guys. Greatly appreciate it. Man, winter has come back to the Ohio area. It's like, now it feels like temperature like 17 degrees Fahrenheit here. And, uh, just got cold. There's black ice. Had like 12 accidents in the Dayton area. And just a little stretch of I-75, just north, north of Dayton. I woke up and there was like a two-hour delay for my, my girl's school. I'm like, what in the world? Why? And then I saw that, I'm like, oh, well, that, that's that's a pretty good reason. So there's probably going to be a wolf over there, but uh, what do I want to approach this? I think I can just go this way. Uh, we'll just shoot our way out of any situations we don't like. That's pretty much what we can do at this point. So it's a nice nice place to be. There's a rope right ahead there. I just signed this says climbing area. I went to the eye doctors today. I had LASIK about 15 years ago. It's been great. Um, now I just noticed that like, when I'm driving the cruiser, and especially at night, I'll, I'll see a license plate ahead of me, maybe 200 feet ahead of me or so. And I'll notice that, like, through my right eye, it's a little bit blurry. Not too bad. But I mean, I just can't make it out. And so I have to, like, close my right eye, and then my left eye will be able to see it. So I went to the eye doctor with my, my daughter. And uh, she had an appointment, too. All right, here we go. Whoa, he came after me all, after all that? That was crazy. I, sh I, I 
dinged him, man, and he still he fought through that. I'm impressed. Uh, so we got infection risk, blood loss. All right, let's go ahead and do what we got to do here. Uh, let's take care of that. I can't believe that I actually got hurt in the hand there because I got those big meaty gloves on now, right? Oh, well. We'll be fine now. What are my gloves doing? I'm curious. What are these? They're 90%. Look at those things. Heavy-duty hand coverings. Leather outers, wool liners, warm tough. And I somehow still managed to... Uh, and normally I would pick up the shells for reloading purposes if I was doing a long, long play survival. But I just so anyway, I'm going to end up with some glasses just for nighttime use. I wanted to get those uh, Oakley Pitchman ones. I think those are the ones that Mike McDaniel wears for the, the head coach of the Dolphins. I think that's what they are. If not, they're pretty close. But uh, my eye doctor apparently doesn't do Oakley's. I guess Oakley has their own sort of like... Uh, what do you say? Ecosystem or something like that when it comes to places that do them and don't do them. So, I went with um, some Nike ones that are pretty close. They're like an olive color. But they, they look a lot like them. So I'm pretty excited to get those. That'll be nice. Just be able to... So, oh, so my right eye is a little bit um, nearsighted. Just barely. That's the one that's causing the blurriness. And then my, my left eye actually went from 2020. Now it's a little farsighted. <laughs> Man, I'm I am not consistent about anything, I'll tell you that much. Even my eyesight. My daughter, she's got some pretty thick frame glasses and um she's she's asked about contact. She's uh seven and uh yeah, she's gonna be able to do them. She has to due to her high prescription level, it's like a five or twelve. Um she's going to uh very near something. She's gonna to have to have some special Contacts made in England and have them shipped over, but uh, apparently they're not that expensive. Um, they just have to be specially made. So, yeah, we're pretty excited about that. She's actually a candidate for it. She's excited. The doctor was very excited about it, too, because he's like, I never really thought about this, but it's true, uh, especially with not being able to see clearly on the sides at all. But he's a, she's like, uh, yeah, her, her whole, like, her field of view is just going to be opened up. Completely. Right now, she's kind of like only able to see really well through basically binocular, like the, the field of view of the binoculars, sort of. So, we're looking forward to that. We got some uh, backup glasses, you know, just in case there's irritation or she just wants to not put them in and relax for the morning, let her eyes rest, that sort of thing. So, she's going to have normal normal glasses, updated prescription, and then she's going to get her contacts as well. That's what I started off with. And they were fine. Just uh, I've had them knocked out a few times back in my work in the old police department when we were running the gun and fighting, fighting guys. And, you know, getting a lot more hands on. Uh, but I didn't want to be blinded and then have to like try to, you know, take a shot at, at something or somebody that was hurting me and uh, not be able to clearly see my back backdrop. proper threat assessment so LASIK were great though so anyway that's I guess that's about all that's really going on in my life at the moment gearing up to head on down to uh, Anna Maria Island not this weekend but the next weekend so we're going to fly in on Friday like the 20 what 2nd 3rd something like that my wife makes all the travel plans Sarasota, and then we'll be down there, head out the next uh, Sunday, Saturday or Sunday, I think we live on Sunday, so that'll be nice, love me some Anna Maria Island, nice and laid back, so, but when, when you get down to the uh, area that isn't like, doesn't have the public parking and stuff like that, you just have like the uh, Airbnb homes, you can just walk to the beach, it's so nice, there's only like a few people on the beach in that area, and just chilled out. All right, well, let's get through here, and uh, I think it's probably about that time. We have to have a little word from our sponsor here. It's the next transition out of this cave. Looking forward to the next challenge. I can't even remember what it's going to be, but we'll just go right down the list. Go on to the next one.
the series is definitely going quite well. I think I'm going to finish this off before I try to take on anything else. Um, as far as Project Zombie or anything, you know, whatever it may be. I don't know if I'm going to do Sons of the Forest. It, I, have to, I have to look at it a little more. I, I played it and it felt really clunky. Um, maybe I just needed to give it a little more time to get used to the uh, inventory system and stuff like that, but everything just kind of felt clunky. It looks like the crafting in the uh, base building is incredible in it, though. But I don't know how much of a story there is. So, I don't know. We'll see. Alright, guys. Quick word from our sponsor here. Do you want to have extra privacy and flexibility while online? Sure, we all do. NordVPN is the leader in internet privacy and allows added flexibility by routing your internet traffic through any of their over 5,400 servers in 60 countries through an extremely intuitive and efficient user interface. In addition, you can access specialty servers for added security such as Double VPN, Onion Over VPN, or P2P VPN servers. But for a casual user like myself, I personally use their proprietary NordLynx protocol for maximum speed. But wait, there's more, such as Kill Switch to automatically turn off your internet if the connection to the VPN server is lost. Or how about this, Split Tunneling, which only routes certain application traffic to the NordVPN server. There are so many other useful features to explore, and if you are interested, use the link nordvpn.com forward slash accurize2 and the promo code ACT2 for additional savings. Link in the description below. All right, we're back. And... Oh, it's just a beautiful day for a stroll, man. Oh yeah, you know what? I put that right there so I wouldn't forget it. Let's pick it up. There we go. Now we're way back down again, but that's okay. I don't think we have any more ropes we need to climb. Ah, sorry. I always end up coughing at least once, it seems like. I need a little notepad next to me so I can just mark down the timestamp in the, in the video and I can just, like, cut that out. But, uh... Little kids, a couple little girls running around the house. Seems like paper and writing utensils just go quick. You know what I mean? They just disappear fast. So I think I'm just going to kind of walk where I want to go unless I see the bear. Um, I try to avoid the bear, but if there's any wolves, I don't really care about them. So let's just stay. I'm just going to go up along this, uh, this ridge line here. Or... Whatever this is, hill line. <laughs> I don't know if you call this a ridge. But along the backbone of this hill, here, these hills here. And we'll just head in that sort of old, old way I used to go. Mystery Lake. I'd cut right through that area and go straight up through there, past a, a you know, a busted up, uh, busted up little barn down here. Oh, been bowling a lot with the guys on my shift. I, I, I've been, you know, I've been a one-handed bowler, bowler my whole life, and now it's like, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to take one of our practice sessions because we do like once a week practice sessions, and we have, we're going to have a league in the in the fall, uh, uh, every other week league. It's kind of cool because that's the one thing that is really hangs us up with our job is if we work Monday one week, the next Monday we we're off, and then next one we work and the next one we're off and it kind of goes back and forth like that with all the days so that kind of works out perfectly for us um, but we've been practicing a little bit getting back into it and uh, having a great time so I was like this one practice session I'm like I'm just going to try two handed bowling see what it is because I've seen other guys do it and it's something completely new to me coming back to it after being out of it for about 30 years I guess maybe a little less maybe 25 but, uh, yeah, I, uh, I remember watching a video on it, and someone was like, it's like you hit the, hit a cheat code or something. The bowl, you do that, there's a nice hatchet, what's Perfect. that one at? 86, what do we got? I don't know, I might, might upgrade, and I'll probably grab that little, uh, firearm cleaning kit, since we have fire, <laughs> we've used up most of ours, um, 84, okay. I don't really care about that. It's only 2% more. 
I'll take that though. That's a nice little find. So. But yeah, I, I started doing it, and my biggest problem is getting enough ball speed so that it's not just overhooking at this point. Just, my rev rate's so high now with uh, two handed bowling, but it is. It's pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. I feel a lot more consistent hitting my marks. I will say my body's sore in areas that I'm not used to it being sore in. But, uh, you know, that'll... Not injured, just sore, you know. Lack of use. Soreness type things. I'm feeling once I get back into it, it'll start to feel... Everything will start to feel normal again. So, yeah, having a lot of fun with that. I bought a, uh... Uh, Hammer Black Widow 2.0 Hybrid. Because the only other two balls I had were from, like I said, 25, 30 years ago, and it was like, like a red hammer and a, like a blue, like a purplish blue nitro. Ebonite nitro. So, it's definitely due for a new ball. Got some new shoes. Shoes are so important. I mean, that's probably the most important thing right there. Being able to slide properly. This has been working good, too. Yeah. Other than that, everything's going well. I was going through the comments in the first and second video, and I noticed one of them was like, Hey, just watching this uh, back to studying to become a police officer. It's always cool to see those when people are starting their voyage into criminal justice. You know, police services or public service of some kind. Whenever they leave messages like that that are studying for it and trying to get into it and they ask for advice and things like that, it's, it's nice to see. Brings back, uh, it's sort of nostalgic, you know, because I'm kind of, kind of like coasting into the end of my career and I, I still remember vividly my first day in the academy, my first day at my police department, my first day being in a cruiser, my first day on FTO with a, with a training officer. My first day pulling out of the parking garage, the basement parking garage, up onto um, onto North Street in Springfield by myself, looking over in the seat next to me, and there's nobody there. I'm in the car by myself. I have a radio. I have a cell phone. I got everybody's phone number. I can phone friends, all that. And I'm on my own, and I'm ready to answer calls myself. I mean, that was back before I had GPS or anything, so you had a, like a map, a laminated map. With like grid, it was like grids, you know, you'd look up the street on the back, and then you'd uh, probably not have to shoot, shoot our way out of this. There's, I'm sure there's gonna be some wolves here. I think there's one straight ahead of us actually right there. That looks like a wolf. But yeah, remember that. I wonder if we're gonna get a text still. I did say I wanted to come down here and explore this. This will come in handy. But yeah, you'd have to like look up E6 for your street if you didn't know it already. And then try to find it on the map. Meanwhile, you know, it could be a domestic in progress or something like that. And you're like desperately trying to find it through this map real quick. As fast as you can. Start rolling that way. Now looking back on it, I, I realized that I was being looked out for by the uh, other people. They just ne didn't necessarily let on that they were looking out for me. They wanted to have that pressure and see how, you know, you guys deal with that pressure. You got guys and gals. I say guys, I'm talking about both, obviously. But there's always somebody looking at They're not just going to throw you to the wolves on your first day. <laughs> hope you don't bring the department in the city a lawsuit. Good luck with that, buddy. So hope you don't, you know, get yourself killed. Even more importantly, you know, it wasn't like that. So we're going to shoot our way out of this. I wonder if we'll be able to. Uh... Well, that was kind of good. A, a preemptive shot seemed to be better than. I wonder if I hit him. Or just scared him. I'm not sure which. Let's go to reload. Because I might need all six given the way I saw things going last time. Did we get a hit? Uh, I don't think we did. I think we just scared him. Which, oh, yeah, we just scared him. I think we hit him that time. 
I don't see blood. Maybe not. Alright, let's move on then. Let's pick up the pace here. Because he might just reset again and start growling at us. Kind of not wanting to waste it. I mean, I know we got 103 rounds plus, what, 109 rounds. But I'm not looking to, uh... Yeah, he's not limping or anything. I, I think I missed both of those. That's okay. Served his purpose. I get to walk away unscathed. He gets to walk away unscathed. We're all happy. Only cost me three rounds of ammo. And the temperature. That's yeah, still fine. Yeah, no problems at all. Nice little, nice little Sunday stroll we got going on right here, actually. I don't, I got a, I got a sprain risk for being on that track right, right look at that sprain risk popping in. <laughs> for, for being on steep ground. They, how oh, they really just, I wish they, I almost wish they'd just get rid of the sprain system. Like, re replace it with something else, or make something else more... Make the make the frostbite and hypothermia more uh, of a threat, if you do want to have some sort of threat, or... I don't know. Something, but... It's always been that way, too, since they introduced it. I wonder what the story is on why they haven't really made an adjustment to it. Or I'd like to be a fly on the wall if they've discussed it in meetings and things like that. And I'd like to hear some of the arguments for and against and things like that. But I'd never, never find out the reason why, but I do find it interesting. Carter Hydro Energy. Uh, remember the last time we came through here, we did get growled at and chased around by the wolf a little bit here, but let's see that. But I'm gonna get up high so I can see the wolf coming at me, rather than be low and not know. You know. And now, once we make it to a ravine, we'll be nice and safe for a good long portion of this voyage and then once we get to once we get over to uh, coastal we should be pretty good I might I might go a different route to avoid the bear because I'm not so worried about wolves now I'm more worried about the bear because the pistol and the bear not exactly a uh, not exactly a guaranteed outcome there you know so I think I might just <laughs> forgot about all this Okay, I guess I'm taking this with me. I guess I'm taking this with me. Should have plenty of fuel now. I'll take that and that. And where are we at now? We're probably pretty low. Today. Yeah, we're okay. It's not the worst. I've seen I've seen far worse than that. Um, listen, you want to drink some maple syrup? Let's just drink some maple syrup. How about we just do that? There we go. You want to have something else? I think that's probably about it. I got some jerky here. Candy bar. Yeah, we'll leave that. There we go. Maybe some jerk. Alright, let's get something to drink here. I think we're... Are, are we actually out of... Oh, we're out of, actually out of soda pops now. Very good. Okay, we're starting to get tired, so maybe I'll sleep at this cabin over here. Um, once we make it over to... Uh, for some reason, I thought I transitioned to the coastal run ravine. I could just sleep out here, I guess. The thing I'm worried about is if the weather gets real bad, it'll probably be uh, hurting. Uh, even in this cave, it could get very cold. So, I mean, we can always head on over to the trailers here at Mystery Lake. But I kind of think we just kind of push through. Maybe not. I don't know. We're pretty tired. Maybe I should spend my energy just chopping up some wood to have on hand in case we need a nice roaring fire. Yeah, we're going to stay here. We're going to stay here in this one. 
And uh, what time is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be good here. So let's just grab some sticks here. Play a little pick up sticks. I'll drop the lantern fuel. Actually, no, I won't. I'll just keep it with me. We'll, we'll chop up these these limbs here. It'll be dark. We'll get in there. Get a nice fire going. Nice roary fire going. Yeah, let's do that. Super weighted down. Those, uh, I think they go for an hour and a half each, don't they? Or maybe two hours? I'm not 100% sure, but. It's getting dark out here. I'm going for go. shelter. Yeah, we are a little too heavy to move. That's okay. I'll drop the this wood here and make a couple trips. Yeah, let's do that. We're really moving slow. So let's drop. I'm yeah, this nine. Really slow for much longer. Killer. That'll keep us warm through the entire night, no problem. So, let's, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I dropped my cap. Go move a little bit faster. There we go. No need to run. If I run, I'll just end up tired. You know what? Screw it. Let's run. Might as well use the energy while we can. We'll get it here into this cave. I didn't realize there was. <laughs> Two more limbs way closer. Right here. I'd have just I should have just chopped those up, but I guess those will be extra spare ones if we need them. If there's a big blizzard tomorrow. I guess we get snowed in. What's the weather supposed to be like anyway? Uh, yeah. Tomorrow's supposed to be a cat one. 30% chance and then a couple nice days, so I think we're probably okay. Oh man, it's not even, we're not even in double digit days quite yet. I thought we were around like the end of week two for some reason. So, all right, nice and dark here. I like to always place my little sleeping area back here with a nice fire right here to protect me and keep me warm. And even though this is an area that's safe, it's just kind of going with the, you know, yeah, let's just drop all those. There we go. Let's head on back out. Eh, we're super tired. I don't know. I think I think we'll just stick with these limbs right here, or these uh, bits of firewood right here. If we need more, we know where to find it. Plus, we got something just outside the entrance here. Even if it's a huge blizzard, we should be able to find it safely, no problem. So, but in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm not even going to uh, use it right now because yeah, it should be warm in here. I'm just going to sleep little bits at a time. Might not need it at all tonight, so this might be all for nothing. So we'll head up here, obviously. Uh, a little bit of an incline going on here. Yeah, let's get another drink. Top off. Yeah, we're we're ready to sleep through the night, so we timed this pretty well. Let's see if we can eat some stuff here. We're gonna eat some peaches. Yeah, that sounds good. And maybe that uh, maybe that energy bar. Shove that down our gullet here. There we go. All right. Let's do this. I'm just going to do about four hours to begin with. I don't think the temperature is going to drop that much, and I don't think we're going to die in four hours, especially in this cave, because this back half of the cave is actually warmer than the front half. Um, there is a point where you there's like an imaginary line, like a visible line. You step across it, immediately jumps up a significant amount of of uh, degrees in heat. So let's see how this goes. We might end up with that blizzard starting to come in, that cat one. It's hard to say. I wonder how they, the, the different categories of the blizzard how they sort of play in. Looks like it's starting to be a little nasty out there, but temperature's at 9 degrees. Let's go for another uh, 2 hours. We'll just keep going like this. Let's see where we end up. That's the same. So, okay. Let's let's risk it for a biscuit. Go, go three hours. Again, if, if worse comes to worse, we get like cold. Let's start a fire. Sit by it for like an hour, and we'll be fine. It got dark again. It's weird. It's kind of bright out now. It's dark again. We're down to three degrees. So it's gonna be cold outside. That's for sure. 
Let's go for another two. And we're going to need a drink after this one, I think. Alright, well, at least I can see what's going on inside the cave. That's not too bad. Let's, uh, let's pick this up. Let's get going. I think we're in pretty, pretty good shape. So I'm going to pull this to the front of this fire and drop all this wood. There's the, there's the part where... You saw how I started walking a little faster? That was where the transition zone was. So, if you're in one of these caves, don't start a fire like right here. Go back. Just just about ha past halfway into the cave and, and keep looking at your temperatures. You'll see it jump up. Alright. Off we go. We need to have the anything out right now. There's no, no threats in this particular transition area. Here, deer. Wandering around. Here, footfalls. There he is. Or there she is, I should say. A couple of them. rabbits are out. They usually are. Just up over this little defilade here. Are they not? Make a liar out of me, huh? Yeah, normally they're out, but I don't see them. Yeah, it feels like the weather's getting a lot worse. Like It's, it's really starting to roll in. Yeah, negative two degrees. What's it? Air temperature is negative twenty-six degrees. So, thank you for great, warm, layered clothing and equipment. Yeah, it's gonna start ripping here. close. Something uh, Astrid's not really used to at this point. She's not used to getting cold and she's definitely definitely feeling it. Negative 11 degrees Celsius. This, this is some no joke weather. So yeah, this I'd say the 30% uh, chance of the Cat 1 storm hitting us is becoming more like a 90% chance. Now does the does the weather forecast change or does it stays stays the same? Are we on ten or nine? Hmm. survived eight. Okay. 
So we're in the middle of the uh, the cat one, thirty percent chance. So when I get some cover from the wind, it goes. It, I basically gain ten degrees Celsius. It goes from like a negative eleven to a negative one, which is still cold, but. A lot better than me is stuck out in that wind. It's, it's ripping. disoriented. <laughs> I'm not going to walk like that anymore. I mean, I know you just keep it between the tracks, right? But I know what happened. I, I keep doing that, and then I'd walk up here to this section where there's only one track and fall right off. Alright. Let's see here. Walk across here. Man, doing this in this wind would be nuts. All right. I've never fallen off of there intentionally. Or I should say, unintentionally. But yeah, I've never accidentally fallen off of there. Tested, I've tested the, uh, you know, law of gravity. Once or twice off of there, but... Uh, Never, never an accidental fall. All right, we're back to coastal now. It's time to go and see if, see if uh, that, that really was a rifle. I'm pretty darn sure it was. I hope it's not a broom like at the uh, Milton farmhouse. I don't think it is. I don't think I've ever remembered one there. The fact that a couple of commenters pointed it out and then. You know, I'm just going to go straight this time. I'm going to go straight up this way and then cut down using the switchbacks, and using firepower to uh, make the uh, make the trail safe, basically. Better get off the uh, railroad tracks before I sprain an ankle. Honestly, that is actually probably one of the better places to have a, an ankle sprain risk versus like a, a slight incline on a, a slope. Uh, I could see you get your foot, you know, slipping in the between the ties, the rubber ties, and just yanking it a little bit wrong. I think that's more, much more of a realistic option than spraining it on something like this. All right, well, let's head on down the uh, switchbacks. I haven't gone down here in forever. Well, there's usually a wolf down here, like a little patrol wolf. But if, you're, if I remember correctly, kind of you kind of cut through this area a little bit. Ish. Yeah, maybe. Well, let me get up top. Here. I can walk, walk up here without spraining an ankle, which is always a huge risk. Might, yeah, I might just. Hop my way on down to the on down to the uh, to the ice and then run on over there to uh, Jackrabbit Island. After all this, looking for a rifle, heading back to like one of my first loot locations. That is the most accurized thing ever. All right, we're gonna sprain an ankle here for sure. I'm gonna slow down, stop. See if that helps. I'm not running. It's just naturally going that fast. Okay, so now we got a nice piece of flat land here. Temporarily. Which won't last long.
This is a cabin I normally don't go to very often. Oh, what the heck. Let's check it out. I can't remember the name of this one. It'll pop up here shortly. Location discovered? No? Okay. That's why I didn't remember the name of it. <laughs> there should be a rifle in here. <laughs> cabin. Just, just cabin. No, thank you. All right, peaches. I'll take it. Sure, I'll go ahead and eat those right now. The amount of peaches that are ingested in this game are, it's pretty impressive. What do we got here? Anything? Oh, there's a broom, not a rifle. Uh, a couple flares. That's actually not a bad little cabin. Got some food. You got some flares. You got a little cooler here. What's going to be in the cooler? Looks like this some, has been here a while. Some decent sardines, actually. I'm going to take those with me. Uh, I'll leave the newspaper alone. I got kind of laggy right there. A little herky jerky. All right, what's up top here? Anything on top? Top bunk? Be... Nope. Coffee maker in the closet. All right, let's just walk around the cabin and see if there's a rifle laying it along the back of it or something. Completely random like that. Yeah. Nope. Okay. Well, we tried. I'm gonna go up here and see if I can get a better vantage point before I go plunging down the hills. Into the into the mouths mouths of wolves, you know. The sharpened fangs. There's there's my Wait, I need to go jackrabbits. That one, yeah. Okay. Just heading towards missing drops. And we actually need to go this way a little bit. Okay. Well, let's just make it down here. There it is. <laughs> do that. Just a matter of time. Left foot. Uh, yeah. you know, well, let's do the pain thing first. Since I have a pistol. That way I won't be shaky. Then we'll, then we'll wrap it. Okay. Well, it was bound to happen. Uh, can I just kind of work my way? I, I don't really want to divert. I just kind of want to go this way. Yeah, we'll be able to make it. We'll make this happen, folks. We'll make this happen. We'll make this shortcut a reality. Oh, there's a wolf there. Well, sucks to be him. If he tries to step. He's about to get shot. Oh, here we go. He is going to try to step to me. I hit him that time, right? Are my shot's that bad? Yep, they're that bad. Okay. <laughs> Let's go for it, folks. Run for it. We gotta see if this is a rifle. One of these days. There's a that's a deer in front of us right there. Looks like it's got his head head down. Grazing. I can barely see the there it goes. Can barely see its antlers. doing all the way out here. Well, we are surrounded by deer in case we end up pulling another wolf like Mr. Wolfie there. Or Mr. Wolfie right there. So it should be a big deal. There's some loud squirrels if they're coming from those trees all the way over there. At least I think that's what they are. They sound like squirrels to me. Let's see if we can get this deer 
killed. I think we just did. He's gonna interrupt his howling here. Oh, he's he's after it. You're gonna get away. No, they 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 separated. They went to their respective corners. Oh, that's a rabbit. <laughs> the rabbit had the high ground and it kinda of terrified me there for a second. surprised that I got that sprayed though as overloaded as I am right now. Carrying, I'm rolling a little bit too heavy. So I would imagine that that does increase the likelihood of it pulling a sprain. But you just seem to sprain, see a lot of sprains even if you're underweight, like very much underweight, like 50% under the weight, still pulling sprains. So I don't get it. All right, fingers crossed guys. Oh my gosh. Thank you. you. Use this. Thank you, Avriel, Valkara, and Jeff Love. Thank you. It's even a good condition. <laughs> All right. Well, let's load it up just in case we need it. Got 30 rounds. I think that should be enough for our purposes. I think we just needed 10 rounds, didn't we? I remember. But yeah, we're definitely not going to uh, use that. Unless a bear were to attack us or something like that. We had, like, no choice. Um, so, obviously, if that happened, we would just transition real quick. Well, we got a rifle. <laughs> Literally right in the backyard. But we did have to go out there to find some more lantern fuels and the hatch and things. I guess there's a hatched up on the uh, that missing drops island. Uh, front porch, maybe? But missed that. So, we got some other good stuff. And I got to take you on a tour of my favorite loot spots. So let's get on back here to the uh, Quonset gas station. Let's just move with purple, shall we? And I think uh, next is going to be chopping up firewood and maybe boiling, you know, having water boiling. Good party. So, let's see how this all goes. I saw in the comments someone mentioned that you can actually put two pots on a uh, you can put two pots on a uh, fire barrel. I wasn't aware of that, so it's always good to know. I don't remember what that is up there, that red on the right or left side of the screen. Are those just tree? Is that part of a mine shaft? I think it's part of a mine shaft. Almost looks like scaffolding or something like that up there. Oh no, that's the uh, lookout. I forgot about the lookout up here. Yeah, that's the lookout. Man, I completely forgot there was a lookout here. Oh man. I guess that's one good thing about having all these regions now, is that like, even the regions that I'm really familiar with it. I've survived a long time in. I forget. You know, I just forget some of the some of the uh, old features of them. I wonder if there's a rifle up there. Probably is. There's always a fun little challenge to get up to that one. It was pretty... There's like uh, these switchback roads, and they were always pretty tight, so you'd have to be dodging wolves. Trying to just scoot by with maybe a flare or something like that, and then try to get to the to the stairs where you, you go up the stairs, and they, they turn around at that point. But just look, it looked different, the, how red it was from that vantage point down there. It didn't look like a lookout at first, but now I see it. Alright, we got a rifle. Finally. Finally. It was, it was, uh, eh. 
<laughs> just steps away from where I started. I've just never seen one there before, so now I know whenever I'm playing this and say, you know, uh, a, a long series or any other series for that matter to, to always look there if I'm, if I'm trying to find myself a rifle. And you should too. See what we're dealing with when we come up over these little bunny slopes. <sighs> now, it used to be they'd fly right into the ground. If they started at a certain elevation, and the ground went up in front of them. They just fly right into the ground. Now those birds go up and over the trees and stuff. Even the even the birds are getting smarter. Well, the well-fed bonus definitely paid off for this little trek. Otherwise, we'll be moving pretty slow right now. We'll be able to mule all this uh, lantern fuel and. Uh, kerosene back. Alright, you see a bear anywhere, guys? Nope, there's a wolf. Can we make it? Nope, we're coming we're coming at each other. I heard another one over here somewhere. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't hit that one either. I'm sure of that. Alright, let's drop what we got and see what we got. Okay. First things first, let's drop this rifle. Let's drop our fuel. Oh, hold on. I got fuel around here somewhere. Don't I? Yeah, over here's my fuel pile. Let's drop that fuel. Let's drop these lantern fuels. Man, they're spread everywhere, aren't they? shouldn't do them by condition. I should be doing all this by. Yeah, we got plenty of fuel. No doubt. Uh, rifle ammo. Uh, let's see here. Drop all that. Cool. Alright, let's see what else we need. Alright. So we got the rifle, we got the rifle cartridges, the matches, bandages, we just need to rip up some stuff, no big deal there. A lantern, I can drop a lantern. A hatchet, no problem, I can drop that too. Potable water, that's a cooking session right there. Sticks, lumberjack session, reclaimed lumberjack session. Eh. Send in days of food, yeah, we got plenty of food, so let me just drop some of this food here so we get the check mark for that. So let's go over here to our food. Oh, here. Let's just drop our crappiest stuff first. It's all pretty high quality now. Alright, where are we at with that? I'm sure we're good. Oh yeah, 15.7 days of food. So we need wood. We need some sticks. Go pick up sticks. Need to tear up some bandages. Hatchet lantern. And then some, some water. So, we can do that. We can do that. Alright. Let's see here. How many uh, pots do I have here? I got a bunch of cans. We can do that if it gets nasty out. Is there any pots? I don't think I did. Okay. No big deal. Lots of cans. Okay, so we're pretty much getting to that point. So, yeah. How much do we need for the hunting rifle? Was it 10? It was 10 rounds, wasn't it? Yeah, so we're up to 30, so that's good. Let's go ahead and do a little, uh... Let's, let's actually, let's go ahead and end this episode here. We'll uh, accumulate the remainder of the items in the next episode. And we should be done in the next one. So, eight episodes. And, uh, yeah. Good times. Alright, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Y'all take care.